Yo, what's up guys, Jack here, and today we're gonna to be taking another look at Lawbreakers. Around six months ago, I did a little introductory video on this because it piqued my interest. The game is being made by a new studio called Bosky Productions, which was part founded by Gears of War developer Cliff Blazinski. Let's just recap the game quickly, although there has been some changes, which is why I'm making this video. It's a game set in a futuristic world where humans have made a bit of a goof and, well, they've accidentally gone and destroyed the moon, the bloody idiots. Bit of a problem. As such, the world is left with pockets of low gravity and people or mostly criminals, are really trying to take advantage of that. The police force, of course, are still around, they're still kicking about and attempting to stop them. It means that there's going to be plenty of cool weapons and equipment to use, including a grappling hook that allows you to swing around the level, which is pretty unique, and also the ability to shoot behind you whilst running forward. I don't think we've ever seen that in a first-person shooter, but it's going to be very interesting indeed. So back then, based off the trailer and the gameplay, which you're seeing on the screen now, this isn't my gameplay, this is actually old gameplay from PAX when they first showed the game up. I imagine it looks a lot different now. It had a very cartoony feel to it and it was promoted as a free-to-play game, but some of that has now changed as more details about the game have emerged. The art style, for one, has taken a bit of a big change. The new visuals are slightly less cartoony and it seems some of that design choice may have been taken to help it stand out against some of the other newer shooters on the market. We've of course seen a lot of Overwatch recently, which is another arena shooter with a very unique art style to it and a very strong developer behind it in Blizzard. Also Battleborn, kind of similar looking game. Now whilst Lawbreakers isn't exactly the same type of game as Overwatch, they are both arena shooters of sorts, so it's pretty likely that they're going to be compared by people just like they were with Battleborn, just because they're all out fairly soon and they're kind of similar games, but the playstyle is very different from Lawbreakers to Overwatch. On the surface it might look the same, but actually if you get into it, it's not. Overall it seems that the dev team have gone back and decided to make a more mature looking game because that fitted with their overall theme and they probably thought it would also help them stand out, which I think is a good choice. I'm okay with it and really it doesn't change the scope of the game at all. Now what is a big change is that the game will no longer be free to play. I remember actually the first video I did six months ago reading some of the comments. A lot of people were like, well, I like the look of the game, it looks cool, there's a good dev team behind it, but free to play, eh, I don't know, a lot of people still don't like that model and they'd actually prefer to just pay like 30, 40, 50 dollars to buy the game and just have all of the content and I think in terms of balancing, that's probably a much better option. Now the team have decided this apparently because of the competitive nature of the game. They didn't want to have any items that were a micro transaction affecting balance. In fact, Cliff Blazinski has been pretty open saying that he didn't want to have a pay to win game, which is good. As such, the game will no longer be free to play, which is a great thing as it sounds like the previous model would have had some items in it that you could have bought with real money to upgrade your character. Despite not being free though, it won't be full priced either, so it looks like there's going to be a nice middle ground here, probably around $20 to $25. I expect the game will still have some microtransactions in it though, but they're more likely to be skins and other cosmetic items rather than anything else relating to game balance. What's more is that the game is currently exclusive to Steam. Previously it was going to use a separate launcher, mainly due to the game's publisher Nexon, but now the game will be on Steam where it really should be. I mean Steam is where most people want their PC games, so it just makes sense. You've got all your friends there. If they can integrate the Steam friends system for like matchmaking and making lobbies, that would be awesome. You can actually add it to your wishlist on Steam right now too. But like I said, no solid pricing has been released. As for the consoles, PS4 and Xbox One, there isn't anything planned at the moment, but Cliff has said that he would be open to it if they found the right partner to port the game over. It's kind of good to see an arena game though, designed with just PC in mind once again. Doesn't happen too often these days, so I'm really interested to see how this game holds up against some of the newer arena games, and it has to be said that it's got some tough 
competition to live up to. And that's all for today guys, I know this was just a little update video on the game but I am very interested in it, I haven't played it myself, I just haven't been at the right events at the right time but I've been following along with all of the news and blog updates, all the gameplay trailers, so I'm interested. And I look forward to when there's like a closed elf or closed beta, whatever like that, to just get my hands on it and see how it actually plays rather than just basing my impressions on videos. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, guys. Are you happy that it's not free to play anymore, that this is going to be like a cheaper buy it once and you're done kind of title? Or would you have preferred if it went with the free to play model? Let me know. As always, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs down if you didn't. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.